Okay, we're going to try something completely different now. Uh, this boat being a double ender, uh, and I want to make it a sailboat, uh, there's not a whole lot of places that, you know, you can find a lot of places to sell the pendles, and Chuck at Duckworks has them, but trying to find some place that has the grudging, uh, you're out of luck. So what I've done in conjunction with uh, Chuck down at Duckworks Magazine or Duckworks Boat Builders is I've got some of their 10 and a half inch long uh, chain plates, stainless steel chain plates. They're one inch wide and they're the same thickness as the normal uh, grudgeons are for the, the, the little short guys that you normally get. So what I've been having to do is bend them. I bent one up first which will uh, uh, go on the boat and it seems to uh, you know come out fairly well. It fits well. I've got to uh, get a bit or something to drill an extra hole in here because the ones that I was hoping to use came up too far back on the shank. But it fits in there and I'm going to uh, probably pinch it down a little bit to get some of the uh, play out of it. But I think when the two of them get on there and being not professionally made, uh, there may be a little bit of binding in there which may work in my, uh, my favor. So. Uh, I'm going to go stop this and we'll get set up as to how I'm trying to do it. It's going to be a little different than I did this one. Uh, if it comes out, the problem I'm worried about is that the distance between here, the curvature, let's see, between curvature and the center of the hole may be off. Hopefully not, but it may be. Uh, this one's, I'm going to do this one just a little bit differently than this one. And if this one, the new one comes out correct, um, then I'll have to get another one of these and, and, and perform the task again and save this for, uh, I don't know, maybe I can make a, a block for a large mast or something, put some more curve in it. So uh, let me set up for here. The first thing I did was uh, I measured off as ten and a half, so I got five and a quarter mark in the middle, and that's where I'm going to clamp everything down and then bend two. So let me set up and we'll get back to this. Okay, what I've got is I've uh, screwed it to two pieces of wood split in the middle right on the center line and I've got a, uh, an old uh, tip off one of these things. I normally cut them down for my boats. Um, so I had an extra one left over to use as a template to bend. So now it's just lift it up. So I got my first preliminary bend out of the way, and luckily this seems to work better than the last one I did, uh, and the screws are coming out even, uh, well, better than they did the last time, but uh, we'll find out as we progress. So let me set up for the next one, and then uh, we'll go along. Okay, I've got it clamped down with the, uh, the pin template to hold it in place for the right radius. I've added some uh, tape on both sides of the stainless so I don't get it all scratched up. Now I'll use a couple pieces of scrap. The sharp ones will watching this will say, well how did he get the screws back out? Well I had to bend it open to get the screws out. I had the angle that I wanted to start with. So now let's just work it down. It would be handier if I had a, a vise. But those kinds of things will come. So I'm getting it down to where the diameter is getting closer. So we'll set up for the next little phase. Luckily, I'm coming out even here on this one, and it's not twisted one way or the other. Okay, I've redid it. Still got my pin in the middle, you can see, and I got some wood and the tape to protect the uh, stainless, but this vice grip jaws tend to clamp beyond the, uh, wide, the, the white spot of it and pinch it down beyond the pin. So it's starting to look a little more like the thing that I'm trying to shoot for. I'll do a little bit more uh, clamping down here to get it a little tighter in behind the pin. And then I'll reset up and we'll start again. Okay, I've reset up. 
This time I've got uh, uh, vice grips, but this one has more of an arc in it, more for, I guess, for uh, plumbing than the uh, other vice grips I have, which uh, seem to have straighter jaws on it. Uh, I've got it bent around the pin, protected by the tape. I use gaffer tape, but duct tape works. Duct tape works good too. Uh, I put a quarter-inch piece of plywood in, shoved down down into the throat. Uh, now I will use it to pry back these, and then I'll reset up with the two pins on either side and see if I can compress it more around the one pin in here. So uh, let's see if I can do this without messing it up. Starting to get a little bit of spread in there now, so I'll come back and see if I can get it crimped down around this pin some more before I readjust these guys. Okay, I've got my new setup, and you can see, and I guess you can see the pin in the middle, and I got pins on either side of the throat here, and I'm going to uh, unloosen it, tighten the screw down, clamp it, tighten it, clamp it, tighten it, clamp it down until I can get some more uh, uh, distance in here. I guess I got some time on. YouTube gives you 10 minutes so, per clip. Ah, I'm down metal to metal. Let me uh, reset up for the next move. So you can see I've got them down pretty well clamped. I'll pull the tape off to give a better view on the next one. Okay, you can see what I'm getting down to now. I'm getting uh, getting closer. I've got a wrap around the pin and it's fairly tight in there. I got a little bit of tape around it to give me some room. And I've sucked this in a little bit. Uh, I'll put them around. The, the other pins in are on both sides again clamp it down and I'll try to form these levers out uh, I don't want to get too carried away because right now I'm I'm getting pretty close to the same uh, uh, throat as the, uh, the other one I may have to uh, re-bend this one or uh, it's got a little angle in it I'll, I'll see how it comes you know, I mean it's not going to be perfect uh, only way it's going to get perfect is if people can put pressure on uh, race light to make something like this for the boats. You, uh, Chuck sells the uh, kayak and canoe uh, rudder uh, fittings, uh, which would be great if the diameter of the, uh, of the tube was uh, 3 eighths. You could use this pin with that hinge and then, oh, what a perfect world that would be. But we'll get back to that in a moment. Well, I got the, you know, which one is it now? Uh, this one. This is the one I just got done doing. Uh, hold it up next to the one that I did yesterday, and they're close enough that uh, until you look close, and you know what I talk about my five foot rule, uh, it's got, not going to be any problem. Uh, seems like you know the, the pins that I'll be using will will swing in them pretty good, and then the other trick will be when I when I put in my long rod in order to, which I always use to make certain that the axis is in line, that I'll be able to put these on the hull and then uh, I'll, that'll be part of one of the interior uh, or well the outside of the boat uh, videos later on when I go ahead and mount these. But right now I just wanted to show you that it is possible to make your own uh, double-ended uh, grudgeons from uh, the uh, chain plates, the race light chain plates that uh, Chuck sells at uh, Duckworks. I think they're RL 398s and they're 10 and a half inches long by one inch wide. So uh, they seem to fit the boat now. I'll do a little malle or bending around and then I've got to find a good drill bit. I'm going to drill another another hole. I could probably get away with uh, uh, tightening it in but I, I want to get another one, another set up in here. Uh, the other ones are just too, uh, too close. I can't do anything with them. So. Um, I should do this for the moment, and uh, uh, we'll carry on with more of the boat later on. So it's not impossible, just difficult. Thanks.